everyone my name is Rachel welcome or welcome back to my channel today I am bringing you guys my top five favorite books of September these top five videos are just the perfect opportunity for me to gush about my favorite books that I've read recently so I of course have reviewed all of these books in wrap-ups for you guys so you can definitely go check out my two September wrap-ups and let's see the first two books I have to talk about I actually talked a lot about out in a reading vlog that I did really recently. I will link it up in the cards above where I read some of Samantha from Books with Samantha's favorite books of all time. So I'm not going to spend too too much time uh, talking about these first two books because I've already discussed them so much with you guys. Um, and as usual if you want even more of my in-depth thoughts you can always check out my Goodreads. I make a point of reviewing each and every book that I read the second that I am finished reading it so that uh, my thoughts are fresh in my mind. So I of course will have my Goodreads linked down below in my link tree. But without further ado let's just get into it. I I have two Lisa Kleypas books that were some of my absolute favorite reads of September. The first is again The Magic. This is technically book like 0 0.5 in the Wallflower series. It's, it's technically a prequel to that series but you can definitely read this and any of the books in the Wallflower series as a standalone. Okay I thought my camera was doing that weird like tilting autofocus thing again that it was doing in my last video. I don't know but I just checked the clip that I filmed and I didn't see it happening. So let's just keep going before I actually lose my sanity. So again, the magic. Okay. This one is about Aline and McKenna. They fell in love with each other when they were teenagers and essentially they were torn apart because of their class difference. Um, Aline is a lady of nobility. Her father was an earl and then McKenna is a stable boy. And so then years later he comes back into her life as a self-made man and he is convinced that she is just this heartless person who broke his heart. He doesn't understand the real reasons why they had to break off their romance. Um, so he's out for revenge against Lean, and that's one of the things I loved about this book so much is the revenge plot. I haven't read that many romances with that kind of second chance angst going on but it was amazing. There's also another romance going on with Olivia and Gideon. Olivia is Aline's younger sister and then Gideon is McKenna's business partner and so they also have a romance throughout this book. So you get two romances for the price of one, right? And that's one of the things I adored about this too is that both romances were balanced so well. I also thought that the angst was balanced really well with lighter scenes and lighter moments. Like everything about this book was just absolutely perfect and it is the first historical romance by Lisa Kleypas that I have read that I have given five stars. So that's just really exciting and now I'm really looking forward to reading even more um, of her historicals from her backlist. And then the other Lisa Kleypas book that I have to talk to you about is Sugar Daddy. And yes, I had to get myself a physical copy. I love this cover personally. Some of you guys might not, but there's like holographic goodness going on on the cover. And I just like the font and the vibe. Like I'm having a good time with this cover you know. Um, but this one is quite a bit different. It is a contemporary women's fiction novel. But this is essentially the life story of this woman Liberty. We meet her when she's about 14 years old and this book takes us through the years to I want to say maybe her 20s or 30s by the end of the book. And this was just beautifully, beautifully written. I do want to point out that there is a romance in this as well. It's not a sugar daddy romance. There is a sugar daddy involved, but it's not a sugar daddy romance. I wanted to point that out because I feel like some people are going to be really weirded out by this title and it is a misleading title. Um, but yes, there's a romance. There's even a little bit of a love triangle going on towards the end, but I really liked how it was written and how that played out. I definitely would not have loved this book as much as I did if it wasn't for Liberty being such an amazing character to follow and she was also just very relatable and I think in particular readers who are Hispanic will really relate to her a lot because she talks a lot about what it's like to be half white and half Mexican in Texas and just she's trying to find herself and her identity with all of that especially because she I, I don't think she ever really knew her father who is Mexican. I think he passed away either before she was born or when she was really young so she grapples with her identity a lot throughout this book. 
Um, it's just fantastic. Really looking forward to jumping into the second book, which is Blue-Eyed Devil. I actually already have that on my book cart right here because it is on my immediate TBR. Um, yeah, I think that she just writes these kinds of books really well. I'm curious to see if she has any other contemporaries besides this series. I'll have to look that up for myself. All right, so the last adult romance that I have to talk about in this video is The Redemption by Nikki Sloan. This is book four in the Filthy Rich American series, and you do need to read this series in order. The first three books are about one couple, and then this fourth book is about McAllister, who was sort of a villain in the first three books. So it's definitely his redemption story, as you can tell from the title. And it's his romance with this woman, and Sophia, who's quite a bit younger than him. I believe he's 55 and she's 25. I'll tell you right now, I don't usually vibe with age gap romances that are that much of an age gap, but I just couldn't help but love this book because as soon as I found out that Sophia was gonna be McAllister's love interest, I immediately got excited because we see Sophia's character a lot throughout the first three books of the series. And I just love her personality. And she openly talks to Maris, who's the main character of those first three books. Um, she openly talks to Maris about how hot she thinks <laughs> McAllister is. And she is like the gossip queen, like she knows everything about everybody. And I just knew that that was gonna match up really well with McAllister. McAllister's personality. McAllister is a very fascinating character. I loved him in the first three books. Like, he's just a very interesting sort of antagonist. And it was just so satisfying to see how Nikki Sloan redeemed his character. And there's just an amazing grand gesture that he does for Sophia towards the end. Like, it's just, it's perfect. It's amazing. I cannot wait to read the fifth book, The Temptation, that is coming out next week, actually. So that's really exciting. And also, as usual, Nikki Sloan brings it with the steam. You know that when you start a Nikki Sloan book, you are in for quite the ride. Um, her writing style actually reminds me quite a bit of Katie Roberts. So if you're a fan of Katie Roberts, like myself, I would definitely, definitely recommend checking Nikki Sloan out. So last but certainly not least, we have two YA novels that really blew me away in September. The first one is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I love this book so much. And the last book that I have to talk about um, that I had to buy physical copies of them. This is book one in a a trilogy actually um, and this is a YA mystery thriller. We are centering around our main character Pip. She is doing like a senior project in high school and this young girl Andy Bell was murdered supposedly or allegedly by her boyfriend Sal Singh who then went on to commit suicide. And so Pip sees how this murder-suicide still haunts the town that she lives in and so she decides to reopen this case and investigate it for herself and see if she can solve it. And one of the things that I have to say about this book is I wholeheartedly recommend the audiobook because we have a full cast of narrators going on. This gives me vibes of Sadie by Courtney Summers because we've got the full cast of narrators and because Pip uh, goes around and she interviews different people. And so you get to hear these people tell their side of the story and there's like a multimedia aspect going on because we see like, I don't know, text messages and transcriptions of these interviews that she has with people. And it's just all so expertly done. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. I actually stayed up way too late one day because I just couldn't wait to see what <laughs> the answer was gonna be to this murder mystery. I do wanna point out as well that you do get all of the answers to this murder mystery in this first book. It's not like it's stretched out in the entire trilogy. So it sounds like each book is going to be about a different case or something like that. And with the plot twist, I kind of guessed the direction that it was going in and I kind of guessed who the culprit was, but I was like half right. So yeah, I just think that this is just an expertly done YA thriller. I haven't really read that many YA thrillers that I've loved, but this is definitely one of them and I cannot wait to read the other two books in the series as soon as possible. All right, and last but certainly, certainly not least, is probably the best, if not one of the best, space thrillers that I've ever read. And that is The Darkness Outside Us by Elliot Schreffer. You guys know, if you've watched my most recent wrap up, I'll link that up in the cards above, that I think this book is totally mismarketed and I will never shut up about this book until it finds its audience. This was marketed as just like a YA space romance. 
and while it's in space and while it is YA and while there is a romance it is so much so much so much so much more than that. Let me tell you a little bit about the plot though. We have Ambrose and we have Kodiak. They are two astronauts from the two surviving countries on earth. This takes place in the year 2470. So yeah, definitely pretty far in the future. And so at this point in the earth's history, like all the other countries have taken each other out through war. So there are only two countries left. So now we have the Federation, which is very much like a USA-esque country. And then we have Demokratia, which is very Russia-esque. And so both of these countries sent one astronaut each to go on this rescue mission because there was an initial mission where this one astronaut went to Titan, which is one of Saturn's moons. Yes, Saturn's moons, right? And like two years after that initial mission, they hadn't heard anything from that astronaut. So they just assumed that she died, but then she trips her distress signal. And so they send these two astronauts out there to rescue her. And that's all I'm gonna say about the plot because I do not wanna spoil anything. It is definitely, definitely a thriller. There were some crazy plot twists. Oh my goodness. I like had my jaw dropped <laughs> several times while reading this. I mean, when you're setting a story into space, there's just so many things that can go wrong and it's very stressful, but also very worth it at the same time. And also, can we talk about this cover? And I love this spine like this is just a stunning book and yes like I've already stated I definitely think this was mismarketed I almost think this might have fared better as an adult novel if the author would have just aged the main characters by a few years because the two main characters are 17 in this um, I don't know that's just my opinion I still think it's an absolutely absolutely fantastic book the romance is really great as well between Ambrose and Kodiak yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. It's epic because it's taking place in space. Like, oh, it's just, it's amazing. I feel like there's something in this book for everybody. So please, please, please put this on your immediate TBR. All right, guys, that's going to be it for my top five favorite books of September. I would love it if you would leave a comment down below telling me about some of your absolute favorite reads from last month. I would also love it if you would leave a like and subscribe. And I thank you so much in advance if you do. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.